Hi, I'm BevNet editor Jeff Kleinman, and I'm here at uh, Expo West with the founder of Brew Doctor Kombucha, Matt Thomas. Matt, CEO, founder, and a uh, guy who's making a lot of noise in a fast-growing category. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where the business is right now? Sure. Yeah, we have done a lot of work to keep pace with the growth of the industry. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of conventional channel growth mostly because it's been a mainstay of the natural channel for a while and conventional is really picking up, um, moving all the way into club and convenience in some, some markets. So um, our business is, we were up about 105% in 2016 over 2015. We're up about 185% so far this year. That's amazing growth. Thanks. Yeah, well, we invested a lot into our newer 50,000 square foot facility. It came online last April. So is a lot of this then sort of filling out the pipeline, uh, getting into a lot of new stores and regions? Well, and honestly, this January and February growth that we've seen was a little un unexpected. Um, I mean, we forecasted 50% uh, less than we did. and. Um, so really the new additions for us are coming this month, um, April and May. So the fact that we've grown our team so much, we've, we've really grown a, a great field marketing team, which I sure. think is important for a product like ours where, um, you know, kombucha has essentially 4% national awareness, right? And, and so people are hearing about it a little bit. A friend maybe told them, hey, you should try this. It's good for you. Stop drinking traditional soda. Um, so we really want to put the uh, the product out there you know so any given day we've got 40 demos going around the country so in some ways it, it feels a little bit like the word is starting to get out about brew doctor I hope so um, and I, I just wonder what the the tipping point was for that well yeah I mean a year ago um, the sales team was myself and a few other people right so you know we We've been very conscious about growing within ourselves on our own cash flow and on debt we could afford. And you know, just about a year ago is when we got to the point where I could take off the VP of sales, sales hat, hat and hire a real VP of sales. And she's been great for us, Michelle Schmidt. Yeah. Um, and she's built out a national team. She hired a national field marketing director who's built out a team of field team leads and then an army of brand ambassadors working those demos. Um, and then, you know, about three months ago, I was able to bring on uh, another layer of, of executive leadership in Marty Wall, previously of Stumptown Coffee and Widmer CBA. And uh, he's been able to, to help take the reins as we try to add more distribution partners, make the case for more activation at retail. It's interesting because a lot of the growth of kombucha seems to parallel uh, the market that developed around craft beer a bunch of years ago in terms sure. of regional brands hitting a you know sort of building up in an echo chamber as the nation starts to identify the trend and catch on to it um can you talk a little bit about the character of oregon kombucha and what the culture is like there absolutely i think oregon is a great place to start a kombucha company because it's it's a it's a beverage culture right i mean you've got more breweries per capita i think than anywhere although that's happening everywhere these days. Um, you know, the growth of coffee companies coming out of there, a lot of innovation around food and beverage in general. So, and that comes down to there's all there, for a long time there's been a care for health and wellness and organic foods. You know, I mean, we've been, you know, there, there's been recycling in Oregon for as long as I can remember. You know, you go somewhere like Vegas, they don't have something like that. But I think it's, it's a culture and an ethos in Oregon that supports innovation. So. Kombucha is the right fit for um, for that kind of consumer because you've got the the organic side, but then you've also got the health and wellness side, where um, you know we've got the growth of naturopathic medicine, people being prescribed kombucha as kind of a daily way to get those uh, acetic fermentation probiotics that are are important to health and wellness. Would you describe it as a cooperative market? For example, I think of two sort of brands with national profiles sure. that are coming out of that area with you and Hum. Yeah, we challenge each other, I think, really well, you know, and um, there's a spirit of, uh, there's been a spirit of competition for quite some time, but um, I would say that, you know, it, it's, it's, there's a realization now that, that we both have great potential nationally, that 4% of the nation even knows what kombucha is, that we're, 
we're, we're on the same side of the table now, I would say, um, although it's fun to compete, and that's important. Absolutely. And, and the customer expects that and everything. I think that kombucha in general is taking away from other beverages, not kombucha producers taking away from each other. Absolutely. And when you have someone in your market who you can try comp competitive strategies right. out against, it starts to help you when you go into other markets. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's kept both brands very motivated and, and hungry, you know, where, um, you know, we see that they do something or they see that we do something and, and um, you know, the good ideas translate for each other and the bad ideas don't and um, it's helpful. So, moving to a sort of more national focus, I mean, there are a bunch of regulatory and labeling issues surrounding the kombucha category, and I don't want to run down the list, okay. but I want, to, I want to hear from you what you think is the sort of most significant uh, challenge from, in that sense, facing the category. I think the most significant challenge is getting everyone, all the kombucha producers, to come together around, um, around truth and labeling, Around um, around a solution, you know, to share solutions to the alcohol issue that's been out there for a long time. You know, at, at the kombucha conference this year, we showed a video tour of our production facility, which included a, uh, a full description of of our our distillery operations, which is our solution to the alcohol issue. Right? We we make authentic, traditional kombucha that achieves an alcohol content of anywhere from one to three percent. And then we have a, uh, a method of distillation called the spinning cone column yep. that without heat, it uses, uh, combines atmospheric pressure reduction with centrifugal force to extract ethanol Yeah, out. you push the alcohol out. Almost. Exactly, and without heat. So the probiotics yeah. are still there. The tests before and after the, the, the technology are the same from the kombucha standpoint. It's just minus the ethanol. And so we wanted to start, by, by showing that at the kombucha conference, we wanted to start hopefully leading a trend towards people sharing their solutions with each other. Uh, I think that, that's a big thing. It's collaboration and around, around solutions and truth and labeling. And then as well as um, a commitment to authenticity. You yep. know, I think that some solutions to the alcohol issue could lead uh, producers towards, towards over dilution uh, as a solution, right? And that's not what the consumer has come to expect. That's not why they're paying $3 for a bottle of kombucha. They're, they want traditional, authentic, you know, natural occurring probiotics in their kombucha, and that's where we think responsibility and authenticity should be the way forward for the industry. Now, when you mentioned the uh, the alcohol problem, you got and, and having a solution to it. I mean, you guys have a distillery, you have tea houses, you have a growing sort of scaling kombucha business. Uh, do you find it? Difficult, or do you have advice for entrepreneurs who are sort of running a multifaceted shop like that? Absolutely, um, I would say there's there's going to be shiny objects, right, that pop up that can distract you, and that's that's traditional advice for anyone, right? It, but you just need to make sure your make sure your profit margins there, and that you have a, a special product that you believe in. And, and drive that business, right? So I spend the vast majority of my time on kombucha because it's the big opportunity right now, right? But we still open about a tea house a year. Um, you know, we want to grow the portfolio of products, um, innovate in the tea space and the tea house space as well. We've got, we'll be at a chain of 10 tea houses soon and growing. And then with the distillery, that was, you know, that was an opportunity born of the solution to the challenge of alcohol and kombucha. So. What comes out the other side of that system is a very clean uh, ethanol, high proof distillate that um, is made from completely organic materials. So that was, well, what are we going to do with it? Let's start a distillery, the world's first tea distillery, right? So I had just... And, and there have been worse ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, right now we have a line of eight craft spirits, and it, I mean, it's still early days. We, we did a lot of tinkering before we released them, but we have very high hopes for the spirits we're making. And, and again, it's under that Townsend's banner. We want to be seen as innovators in tea, and, yep. um, and our kombucha effort goes along with that. So what's, what are you hoping for in the next year? Well, I want to uh, outperform our expectations, which is what we're on track to do. Um, I want to find the right VP of marketing. That's been a tough hire. Uh, 
someone who can help tell that story, you know, from tea to kombucha to uh, spirits, um, and really help us make the tea houses, um, you know, the living room of the brand. Um, I think that's important because we have a cool story. You know, it's, yeah, been, a, it's been a dynamic adventure I've been on and uh, finding the right person to, to do that the way we do things, right? We don't use agencies. Everything's in-house. We, we learn from within and we support our team and we, we grow that way, uh, which I, I think, again, is something that is very Oregonian and, and very Portland. Um, and then also for this year, we're, we're working on our B Corp certification. Yep. Um, so we want to make you know solidify our commitment to sustainability and to supporting nonprofits that we've always been doing. This is a way of putting it in writing and getting yeah. that done. That um, uh, that symbol starts to carry a lot of weight. Oh, it's important. It's uh, it's like your USDA organic symbol. There's things you can't do once you have that. You know. Yeah. Um, so and then just create a whole bunch of jobs. You know, we're going to grow a very large team in a fairly short amount of time. And uh, access to high quality individuals is very important and, uh, and bringing the right people on board. So listen, thank you very much for joining us, Matt. Yeah. Best of luck in the future. Thank you. For BevNet, I'm Jeff Kleinman.